Hello and welcome to the special collection of short business support podcasts that have been designed and created, especially with you in mind, the local business owner. This has been an unprecedented time of lockdowns. It's an experience we never would have imagined would exist in our lives. When would we have thought that our businesses would be closed for such extended periods? We're now into almost a year of it, so I know it's starting to affect a lot of us in a much stronger, impactful way than it was last year. This masterclass will give you practical information, professional tips and inspiring ideas. I really want to help you revamp and re-energise both yourself and your business as you prepare to reopen your doors. I'm Mags McAlpin. My business is called Creating Retail Magic. It's a creative retail consultancy where we provide training, mentoring and advice all about the creative side of retail. We call it retail theatre. So think about the magical customer experience that you can offer every person that comes into touch and contact with your business, your products, your brand, your space and your services. It's that sensory experience, the sights, the smells, the sounds and maybe even the tastes that makes your space special. So perhaps you'd like to take your pen, your notebook, grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy these next 20 or 30 minutes as you listen to the Spring Into Retail 2021 programme. I guarantee that you'll take at least a few new ideas and inspirations away that you should consider as you prepare to reopen your doors and to welcome your customers back in. And don't forget, of course, that your local council is there. It's just a phone call away. Please do give them a call or drop an email to them and see what guidance there is and maybe support that you can avail of. So enjoy the masterclass and I hope you get some nice tips. Hello and welcome to the Spring Into Retail 2021 Masterclass, which is all about the magic touch. It's visual merchandising and retail display tips, especially for you and the local business owner. Um, I am really excited with this session to, to share with you all my experience and my ideas. Um, I'm, I have been a professional window dresser more or less all my life. My first window display was uh, installed when I was three years old. Um, it was in my grandfather's shop in Dublin, where I'm from originally, and was a menswear shop. And I clearly remember being in the window with him, um, putting in tin foil and crushed black crepe paper and lots of silver stars everywhere. It was the launch of um, the Star Wars film and of course it was there was great excitement so the window displays in, in Dublin reflected that and of course my grandfather with his uh, small gentleman's outfitters um, very very bespoke work um, he knew all his customers of course by by name and uh, they all would come to him so he really always wants to make the shop feel feel quite special um, and I spent a lot of time in, in that shop growing up. Um, and I think that's where, of course, I got my love for, for all things display. Um, I would be aware of the, the display teams in the windows of the department stores in Dublin, um, many of which are, are gone, um, as, as they are in, in Northern Ireland as well, unfortunately. But I would see the, the, the display teams in the windows and, and I just remember the, the magic of childhood, especially at Christmas, where you would go and have a look at the, the window display the, the Christmas moving teddies and the animals and the glitter, the warm lights, the excitement of it. And I still remember pressing my nose to, to the glass um, to look more closely in at them. And, you know, I've been very, very lucky um, as I went through my career then. I, I started off doing window dressing and uh, got to create fabulous grottos and um, Santa grottos. And uh, even to this day now, having uh, my my business which is called creating retail magic and um, as a retail consultancy where we we do window dressing we uh, dress events we create santa grottos and as the business has developed we are just i enjoy so much that we can offer training mentoring and advice to to small business owners no matter what size your your business is or what sector you're in and even if you have a market stall, how you can create that retail magic in, in your space with your people and, and your place and your products. So with this uh, session, the Smart Masterclass, which is all about creating that retail magic, I'm, I'm going to share with you professional tips on how we create displays, where we get our inspiration and how we create that magical customer experience in our place. Um, and space. So let me uh, show you some um, 
uh, notes and ideas and some images that I'm sure you're you're going to enjoy. So grab your notebook and your your pen and your your cup of tea, your glass of water, and enjoy this session with me. You're definitely going to get some some ideas to to think about and use now as as you prepare to reopen your your doors and and rewelcome your customers back into your space. So the first thing that we're going to look at is your store layout. And I'm going to share with you some ideas around store layouts. So you could think, hmm, maybe I could tweak my space a little bit more to look like that. Or actually, I'm really happy with what I have. But what way could I bring it up a notch? So we're going to look at store layouts. We're going to look at visual merchandising themes and schemes. So in that section, I'm going to share with you top tips on where I get inspiration for creating window display themes and event decorating ideas. We're going to look at colour, which is one of our key points of, of, of inspiration for visual merchandising and, and creating that retail magic. And we're going to look at composition, how we actually construct a grouping. Um, and this will tie in quite nicely if you've been able to have a look at our masterclass on photography and all the little tips that our photographic experts have shown with, shared with us in order to get that perfect shot of our product, our, our place and, and our people as well. So composition tips. So let's jump in now and see what we have. So, excuse me, so store layout, back to basics. On your screen there, you'll see there are six layouts. They are generally how we lay out shops. For about eight years, I worked with an international shop fitting company and we worked right across the the islands of the of the British Isles, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, throughout England, Scotland, Wales, and I also worked on projects on the continent. So no matter what the sector is, there are different layouts that will, will fit to it. Um, what I would like you to do is have a look at these and see are there any of the layouts that appeal to you or maybe resonate with you that you think, yeah, that's how my shop is laid out. So if you see what you have there and we talk about it, Think about, are you happy with it? Could you tweak it? Could you adjust it a little bit? Or would you like to actually relay out the store as much as possible and keeping your costs down, of course. So the ones I'd like us to look at there. So the first one, which is called the loop, um, and it's on the, the top row of your screen. We would normally use this in, in fashion and um, homewares. Um, and it's to encourage people to sort of really look at um, how, how their, their products are on tables so, uh, that your customers can, can walk around it and, and really look at all the products and, and experience it. Um, again, fashion and homewares use this quite a lot and they will um, optimise the space with then, of course, wall displays. What's nice about the loop layout in these unprecedented times is that you can take out mid-floor units to increase your pathways to allow for social distancing, to allow for your sanitizing points and to, to avoid having, um, you know, like a, a block where people kind of will get too close to each other. And um, the other opportunity with, with this system, the loop system, is that you may not have to use tables in the middle of it. You could create pathways using a beautifully dressed mannequin or a mannequin wearing a, a fun t-shirt with a, a fun message on it, which again could be you know, mind your two meters and things like that. Just reminding people of, of how we're, we're living at the moment, but I'll talk about more of that in, in a few minutes. Um, having a look there, um, the uh, <clears throat> angular system there, you will see that quite a lot again in places in shops where you really have to optimize as much as you can about your, your wall space. So that would be, um, again, more, for example, if you are having lots of, of hanging clothes, lots of shelving, uh, lots of product on, on, on units. So the angular one might be good for you. You have restricted uh, pathway space, of course, in it, but that mid island units that you can see in the middle, that can be reduced. And again, it could be angled, could be turned around on a 45 degree angle to sort of free up some more space again to allow people to move around safely in, in your retail store. So have a look at that. 
um, the free flow, very similar to the first one. Again, mid floor units that can in include gondolas, tables, mannequin displays, or, or groups of little tables for displaying products on. You would find that quite a lot um, in the likes of uh, boutiques, for example, or again, in the likes of a bakery, you might have that or uh, food products where you have a counter, a syrup over, and then you have tables in the middle of the floor for your, your prepackaged goods um, and other products like that. The diagonal, well, the interesting thing about diagonal, again, you're using wall space and um, you have a counter and you have uh, mid floor units. This gives a lot of um, you know, visibility of the employees so that at any point in the shop, you can move slightly and you'll see your employee at the counter. So that helps your customers see um, if there's someone there to, to help them and how they can connect to, to get served in, in their business. Um, talking about customer service, have a look at our, um, our short podcast on customer service excellence. And there will be some tips that you will, you will glean from that to revamp and revi revitalize yourself as you, as you prepare to reopen as well. Um, coming down there with the, the grid system, we find this quite a lot in more grocery hardware homewares. But again, is it something that could work quite well for you in your space? And the final one there, the force path, well, you'll find this most frequently in homewares or furniture stores. It's a predetermined path where uh, your customers walk through a path and they are exposed um, really at every opportunity to every product that you have. And um, you'll see it in showrooms quite a lot. Again, you might not have a massive Space that you can do such a predetermined path, but are there any elements in that layout or any of the other layouts on this that could really resonate with you? So at this point, if you're not actually in your uh, retail space at the moment, cast your mind back to imagine when you walk in the door and you look to your window display, whether it's right or left, and start having a look at the customer journey as, as your customer comes in, what they experience as they come into your shop. Have a look at our masterclass session also, which is all about the customer. It's in the um, customer service excellence one, and it's about the customer journey. So have fresh eyes and have a look at when you come in to your store, to your shop, your practice, your salon. What do people see? What, where is the sanitizing point? How is your sanitizing point laid out? Is it clinical? Is it a bit, you know, uh, how should I say, not scary, but not very comforting. Um, is there some little changes you could make there? And is the cash point, the serving counter, is that visible? How are people moving around your shop? So have a new look, a fresh look at your, your store layout and see if there's any inspiration you can, you can take from these ideas on screen. From the store layout then, what I want us to have a look at is um, rethinking our interior. So again, for us, when we reopen our doors, it's all about maintaining that safe space that we've created over these past few months and we've started to become more acquainted with. Um, what I want to show you here is just some ideas about how to create those mid-floor displays and a more of attractive and a, a less kind of a wall type approach um, as in a, a solid block wall just from your, your aisles and your units. So you'll see from the images there, are there any little ideas that you could use whereby you're creating really nice maybe old-fashioned ladders or crates or um, little trolleys or plants, things like that, to create divisions and dividers in your retail space that your clients and your, your staff can still see each other through but you're opening up the space as well as managing it. Again, could you use, for example, mannequins with positive messages on the mannequins again? Um, and of course, to dress them with the stock that you are, are selling. So, re, you know, always trying to change your, your mannequins uh, every week. You should be changing your stock every week. You should be uh, looking at your window displays, not changing the whole thing, of course, but making a few little tweaks here and there. Could be the same products you keep in your window. Just move them around when you're dusting, removing the little dead flies and all the bits that normally are part of a window display. Making sure your glass is clean, of course. So creating mid-floor displays that are actually functional as well as aesthetic. Using table displays. They might not have to be big, large folding tables, as in with clothes and products that are folded on them rather than closing up tables, but 
do you have something smaller that could be used like the size of a card table or or a pillar or something like that again just to create something different and interesting in your space Chalkboards, you can't go wrong, even if they're fun kids easels um, or perspex signs with inspirational quotes or funny little memes or little cartoons or drawings on them or little pin boards where you've got images of your new stock in. Maybe you've got a little Polaroid camera and you've been taking little snaps of things that have come in, in, have come into the shop. Um, rather like the way online you would do your Instagram stories or your Instagram reels, bringing online into offline into your real shop what fun little things can you do that you're creating a safe space but with a bit of a, a twist more of a creative approach sanitizer points of course very very important think about your own one when you, your customers come through your door and your sanitizer point is there what does it look like do you have a sitting on a table? Do you have a sign? Have you bought in one of the specially constructed mid-floor units that dispense, you know, it's like a pump dispenser? Think about what your sanitizer points look like and how they feel and go back to basics. Think about, for all of this, your brand personality. We have a fabulous little session, which is all about branding and it's called it's your personality, it's personal, because that's what it is. Your brand and you and your business, you are all like a triumvirate, you're all the one and the same thing. Um, so I want you to start thinking about everything in your business, in your salon, in your practice, in your waiting room, and even your market stall uh, and your craft stall, maybe that's what your business is. Is there consistency of, of, of tone, of images, of, of feeling of colour throughout everything, even down to your sanitizer points. So maybe that's the one thing that you'll take from this session that I'm going to check how my sanitizing points are when I go into the shop. Let me have a look now for you. So rethinking your exterior now rather than your interior. I want you to think about it as almost like a curbside economy and use this time before you reopen your doors to really think about when people perhaps are queuing to come into the shop or again walking by considering whether they're going to come in to do the as we call it the stop look and, and shop approach which is they're stopping at your business they're looking through your window they're coming in and they're shopping with you go back to your basics what does the front of your shop look like and is it appealing to a queue that may be there for example so there's quite a nice little image here that I'm going to share with you. Um, your store facade in these times, we want them to be re-energized because we want them to be considered a connection, the, the moment of rapport, building that interface between your brand and, and your consumer. In our customer service masterclass um, and our branding masterclass, we talk about how important it is to understand our customers, who they are, what their needs are, their expectations, their lifestyle experiences, and even their customer journey of all the touch points that they learn when they come into contact with our business, um, both online, of course, and in this case, offline. So have an objective, take an objective look at your business, at your premises, and have a look at your signage. Is it good enough for you at the minute? Does it need even just a bit of a clean or a bit of a coat of paint? Does the whole shop front need a little bit of a dickying up? How are your displays? How often are you changing them? Could you start doing displays if you don't? What other things can you do just to re-energize and, and you know, revamp your store facade? Because it's really, really important, both in terms of your presentation on the streets as we welcome our customers back in. But again, if people are waiting outside queuing to get in, what could we do? The image that you see on screen is, um, it's a bakery essentially called the Biscuiteers, um, a London-based bakery. And what they have done, I why I really like this picture, is that it's a very, very simple concept, a simple brand. It's just uh, like a sort of a, almost a chocolatey brownie sort of gray color that they use for their, their font and their branding. And they have dressed, I, I use the word dress because that's what it is to me. They have dressed the front of their shop. Um, very, very simply, it's a white facade, but they have used graphics to make it look like there are pillars with flowers grown around them. They have a list of their products all written down the side and almost like cursive handwritten script. Now, it's a very busy image, but it's perfect for their brand. 
Um, so think about what is your brand. Go back to your brand personality and the tone of that. How could you re-energize your, your store facade, your shop front? And to follow on from that, we really see now that window displays are becoming more important than ever because they're blurring the outside and the in and it's appealing to the anticipation of us coming back to go back into our shops and being welcomed back through the doors by our, our shopkeepers and our business owners. So think about what are you going to do now for your window displays? Either while the shop's still closed at the moment, could you still have a window display in? Again, just to keep the place looking animated and, and alive and saying that our doors might be closed, but we're still here. The business is still going. Keep shopping local. It's so important to keep our businesses in business. The little picture there is a very, very simple way of doing a very, very easy Valentine's window. Uh, helium shaped heart, uh, sorry, helium heart shaped balloons just popped on the top of mannequins. You don't have to have a fashion shop to do this. You could have any type of business and you could have a mannequin doing that. Um, very, very easy to do, very, very simple. And the, the further point to the rethinking your exterior and your curbside econ economy goes back to your queue. Um, as people are queuing outside and they're on their phones, think about your online, your media connections. Are there any promotions that you could do that people could pick up on while they're in the queue? Um, or things that you're sharing online so they're connecting with you through Facebook and Instagram, even while they're on the queue outside, just waiting to come into you. Or again, going back to basics, signage outside. Do you have a chalkboard outside that you're saying to people, welcome, thanks for waiting, thanks for being social distancing. Um, I did see some uh, images of some shops whereby they had some space outside and they set out just some very simple wooden chairs painted in really bright cheery colours and set them at two metre distances. So there was probably about, you know, two or three uh, chairs um, spaced out at the distances. And it was quite fun because again, the people who were queuing could just sit down on them and, and, and wait Great bit of fun, great bit of interaction, great again for any social media content that you would wish to snap. Or you could encourage your customers to, you know, take a snap of themselves while they're, they're on the chair waiting to go into. Again, think creatively, a bit of fun, a bit of connection, your brand personality reaching out to your customers. From your curbside economy then, what I want us to have a little look at is thinking about visual merchandising itself the themes and the schemes. Um, there is lots of inspiration. As a professional window display uh, artist and, and window dresser, a visual merchandiser as I'm called, um, I always get lots of inspiration for, for creating uh, both your dis displays in, in windows, um, for themed events, for the likes of uh, uh, you know, twilight markets and, and conferences, um, town centre dressing campaigns, all the, the jobs that have been blessed and, and projects I've just had such a privilege to be to be involved with um, so it's great to having a starting point of where we think where do we get ideas so when you start thinking about what window displays am I going to start doing when while I get ready to reopen and when I do reopen think about the seasons that's a starting point and think about key retail events in the year and in our social media masterclass, there's some good reference made to planning your social media retail calendar. Use the same concept, the same idea for your visual merchandising calendar. Think about key events that are coming up, probably Valentine's Day in, in uh, the month of February, for example. Um, but there are other days as well, like there's a, a National Umbrella Day, there's a National Wear Red Day, National Women in Business Day. Um, and of course, then we'll be coming towards Easter and into our, our spring and, and summer events. So there's lots of inspiration there that you can start thinking about and pop those into your calendar, into your planner and start working out. I would recommend have a visual merchandising theme or scheme, maybe once every, maybe four to six weeks, you could kind of stretch it out, but you can make little bit of tweaks in between because you're changing your stock around. You may be putting in some new clothes on your mannequins moving around some product in your window, changing fresh flowers, things like that. Um, so here's some little tips to revamp your displays. 
So your retail calendar we mentioned there, and here's a really simple, easy thing to do for um, Easter. So you get a lot of cardboard, uh, you cut them out into the half of eggs and another bit of cardboard dressed with feather bows and hey presto you've got an instant fluffy yellow chick. Whether you are doing children's clothes that's in the picture here or it could be homewares, it could be a bakery, it could be shoes, um, anything even for a practice of a professional practice you know little fun things like this will be lovely in a a salon, a beauty salon window or really anything. So they're just fun. It's to make people stop, look and shop again, get people talking and use those images on, on your, your online um, communications, of course. So retail calendar is one of the first places where you can start to get inspiration for your, your VM themes. Again, in-house promotions or, or suppliers promotions. Maybe you have stock that you want to get rid of now um, when you reopen stuff that you need to shift, use that as, as your visual merchandising theme, get inspiration from that. Um, any of your suppliers, maybe they have points of sale that they could give you or again, props that they might like to share with you for, for that promotion. There might be a tourist or a cultural event. Now I know a lot of our um, events, unfortunately are all canceled and postponed at the moment, but life is still going on. So think about other things that are going on in, in our cultural and social calendar, um, especially, you know, coming into the spring now and, and the summer seasons. Um, this uh, seaside display is uh, was for an event, a, a coastal seafood festival and Again, in it, I use sort of very traditional lobster pots and ropes and uh, some artificial fake uh, display crabs and seagulls and some really nice uh, display board there with lots of fun puns in it, which was called Advice from a Starfish. So again, very pun thing, very punish, punning things. Uh, seize the day, be sure of yourself, catch a wave, don't get carried away, don't be shellfish. Um, avoid peer pressure and make friends, not anemones. Yeah. And reach for the stars. Fish, I think, was the last one. So, again, a bit cheesy, but quite good fun. Any of those ideas, what could you do? Maybe punning is the thing to do. Can you think of something funny to write on your window using chalk pencils or chalk uh, markers that are easy to remove again? The uh, other little bit of inspiration there that I can give you is a call to action. Now, Remember when in Alice in Wonderland, when Alice fell down the hole and she was uh, unsure of, of what was going on and she was discombobulated and all over the place and she saw the key, which was for the door and she saw the cake and the cake said, eat me and the little bottle said, drink me. Then she knew what to do. So this is a call to action. It's telling your customers and your, your visitors what you want them to really do. So welcome back to our shop welcome back to shopping come in we have a sale on we're delighted to see you we've got new stock in we're having an event we've got free goodie bags all of these things they can inspire your window displays and your schemes and themes so now use the opportunity to think about well what is your call to action what do you want people to do in the next few weeks while you prepare to reopen your doors so what's your call to action online? And when you reopen your doors, what's your call to action? It's to invite them back down. Tell them when you're opening, tell them what to, to expect. Use a little video to go online and do a little walk around the store because you've rejigged it or you've repainted, you've got new stock in, you're having a sale. Share that and use that as your call to action to, to, yeah, basically to stimulate response and build that connection and build, enhance that rapport that you have with your customers. So from VM themes and schemes, then we go on to another element of inspiration, which I adore, which is color. So you'll see there on your screen, the color wheel. And um, if we've done our art in school, you'll recognize this. Um, and it shows how all the colors are laid out and the relationship that they have with each other. So very, very simply, there are three areas um, and three, how should I say, three sorts of uh, approaches I take when I'm looking at colour for my inspiration for displays. And bear in mind, this is not just window displays. This can be any type of tabletop display or on a counter or a shelf that you're just taking as a photograph, again, for your social media. 
have a look um, at our uh, masterclass on photography uh, in this series of Spring Into Retail 2021 masterclasses, because you'll get lots of ideas, again, on taking really good photographs of products um, of your place and then on your people as well. So looking at colour, I mentioned there, there's three sort of approaches I take. The first one is monochromatic, so it's the shades of one colour. You'll see there on the colour wheel, um, even looking at the, the blues going in from the, the, the dark navies right through to the soft royal blues, uh, the lime greens to the olive, and the image there you'll see, um, which is the lower half of a mannequin with a box attached to it, and then the products placed on top of it. It's a very, very easy, simple thing to do. If you have a mannequin, use the base, take the torso off, use a cardboard box, just securely fit it on the top or a piece of light piece of wood to basically make your tabletop and then pile your products on top of it. In this case, it's done in shades of red through to orange and pink. But again, think about your brand's personality, your own brand. What are the colors in that? What are your shades and your tones? And you have easily a, a display ready to go there using a monochromatic scheme. The second one I always look at is the analogous, which are the ones that are next to each other. So in this case, it's a beautiful window from the American brand Anthropology. Um, I love that brand as a source of inspiration because they really focus on trying to use sustainable and, and upcycled and recycled elements in their windows. Um, in this case, it's to give you the idea almost like of a, a tropical kelp forest, an underwater paradise where they have the beautiful greens going into the turquoises into blues. Um, this window in this case are made from they're made from rag garlands. You can do something like that yourself and dip dye them yourself or you can do things like that with tissue paper or, or pom-poms. Again very very easy to do shredded paper. It's a very very effective and simple display there but look at the colors how they blend into each other so go back to your own brand personality and think what inspiration is there there that you could create your own um window display that has two of the colors next to each other you know the purples going into reds yellows going into greens etc um and also reply that to the seasonal aspect of of displays beautiful yellows and greens for the easter time um, blues and greens for summer, going into the rich colours of autumn. You can see where we're going on that one. The third approach I take when I'm using colour as inspiration is the ones that are very traditional, the complementary ones, the ones that are opposite each other. So for Christmas, red and green, you know, the berries on the holly. Think back to nature, absolutely gorgeous. Um, the little picture I've shown you there is a very, very simple idea. It's, uh, they're basically eggs. So although it's an idea for a very subtle Easter display, eggs that are painted in <clears throat> very soft colours of, of pale turquoise, pale duck egg blue um, and very soft coppers, this display could be used at any time of the year. It could be used with pebbles or pine cones, eggs in this case, polystyrene balls, anything, any type of product could be put into a glass vase and it could be painted in monochromatic, analogous complementary colours. Very, very simple idea to create a lovely display. If you had a tall glass, do something like that, stick some branches or twigs, even just from the garden, and straight away you've got a beautiful, almost Ikebana-like display just to go on your counter in your shop or even beside your sanitising point. That could be the difference that you make to your sanitising station. So from colour to give us inspiration, we then move on to the composition. Again, please do have a chance, if, if, take a chance if you can, to have a look at the masterclass on photography and you'll get some more ideas on composition and composing uh, products for photographs. But in this case, what I want you to sort of think about is the pyramid arrangement. Now, this is the one grouping that I use most frequently when I'm creating a display. And um, I always talk about three heights, three depths and three widths. So think about a display where you've got a top area, a middle section and a lower. You also have center, left and right. And then you have background, middle ground and foreground. Let me show you some pictures in a moment of what that actually means. But the pyramid is the most 
easy, I should say, comp composition layout to, to follow when you're creating display. It works all the time. And you can have different pyramids in a large display. So you might have a large center one and then a smaller pyramid to one side and a medium sized one to the other. So you have three pyramids within the one and it really, really will work. You can use that with mannequins, with products on tables, <clears throat> with food products, cosmetics, really, really anything. You can do that. Other um, compositions that are quite frequently used are the step, which as you can see three there in a step row, um, a zigzag line where they are positioned, the products are positioned from the foreground to the background in a sort of an undulating pattern. And then the repetition. So again, you might see a pair of shoes, a bag, a pair of shoes, a bag, a pair of shoes, a bag, things like that. Um, or a vase and a, a small box, something like that. So from the pyramid arrangement, then we will have a look at groupings. You can group your products again in function, brand or color. And these Im images on screen will give you the ideas there. So, for example, the lower one there, you've got a very, very simple um, display, which are Le Bouton shoes. You can tell by the red soles. And they have been um, displayed suspended within um, essentially small hula hoops. Um, if you look in proportion, there it's not a, a normal size hula hoop because the, the shoe is not so far away from the, the inner circumference of the, of the hula hoop itself. But hula hoops are a brilliant way to um, create displays. Um, you can dress them with foliage, you could, so they can be spring foliage with you know wisteria or daffodils on them or ribbons hanging down. You can uh, dress them then with seashells and, and seaweeds or driftwood to get your uh, summer displays, your seaside theme, your beach life theme. And again, going into autumn, beautiful autumn leaves, winter foliage. So you cannot go wrong with hula hoops in displays, um, both hanging them vertically like that, or you can hang them horizontally so that you get a chandelier effect. Hula hoops are great. Um, but looking at the composition there, even the crabs, which is a snap of um, the sea, seafood section in Harrods Food Hall, you'll notice that there's a pyramid arrangement amongst those uh, crabs and um, uh, lobsters. <clears throat> Again, three heights, three depths, three widths. You can see the triangle coming through there. And the other image on that page, again, is using the triangle or the pyramid arrangements um, in an antique store. So you have the green trunk on the ground, the table above it, the set of drawers going all the way up to the jug on the top. And visually, it's connected through to the chandeliers that are hanging from the ceiling. So you can see where the pyramid arrangement comes into force there, which is why I, I love it. Um, and thinking again about your groupings, think about the function of your products. So if it's skincare, it's grouped according to the type of skincare it's, it's, it's suiting and, and facilitating. Or maybe you're looking at the brands. So you might have a whole different selection of homeware, all within the one brand, but all, you know, they could be pots or tableware or uh, cutlery, but it's all the same brand. Or again, colour. You might have a, a display of all different products, but they're all in beautiful shades of yellow because you're really promoting your Easter display. So lots of ideas there around the composition uh, in terms of arrangements and, and groupings of your products. As we go on then to our next one, let's have a look at the actual themes and schemes. So I want to leave you with some ideas around spring and Easter. Um, a very, very simple way of creating um, impactful window displays are to use uh, window stickers. Now, for ease of use, I always recommend the cling window stickers rather than the gummy sticky ones because they can be quite challenging at times to, to get off. But sometimes even for putting on, because if you put it in the wrong place, you have to pick it off and try and get it to stay back again. With um, the self cling stickers, they're great because you literally spray the window with some soapy water place the self cling on, push the air out of it and rub a uh, J cloth or a tea towel over it and then they're there. You can pick them off quite easily and you can reuse them. So I love self cling static stickers for, for window displays. Um, 
Other elements there that are really nice for, for spring and Easter, well, we have a, a very traditional Easter Christian display there, very simply made out of, um, uh, it's actually a like a, a very shallow drawer, but again, window boxes, very, very simply done. If, if you think that that would be really nice for you to do, whether as a window display or a tabletop display or something for your social media. The other images there that you'll see are just very, very simple collection in the top there of um, glass vases filled with uh, lemons and some beautiful yellow foliage um, and some twigs. Just yellow brings joy and brings spring and Easter happiness there. So I, lo I love that display, very, very easy to do. Um, and it's complemented very nicely with the uh, red picture frames in the background. Again, go back to the colour wheel and look at the the, the colours that are opposite each other. Um, again, there's yellows versus the, the lovely reds and those that are close to each other. Um, the image there on the uh, on the right hand side of the screen uh, is, is a, a Peter Rabbit theme. It was a, a spring Easter celebration. But think about what you could do that's quite fun. Go back to what storybooks do you love reading with your children or that you, did you love as a child? What films inspired you? I mentioned there at the very beginning that Star Wars always has a, a special place in my heart. Not that I'm a Star Wars fan by any means, but I always think back to that window display doing with my grandfather when I was, I was three. So what inspiration can you look to again, to books, movies, even songs to, to create your window displays? The uh, main image on, on the slide here, it shows uh, a rabbit. And if you look closely, there are other little mannequin dolls on the table, like the size of a, a Barbie or, or a Cindy doll. And they are in some ways to be Alice. So it's kind of like the white rabbit at a tea party. It's just something very different. It could be an Easter display, it could be a spring display, or it could be neither. It could be just a fun display, um, a tea party, but it stops makes you stop and look and look at the detail. Look at the mannequin stand, the little model standing on the table. One of them is shoveling a, a spoon of sugar into a teacup. Another one's handing a teacup to another. And there's another one just sitting on the edge of a chair getting up to no good, I think. So have a look at that attention to detail and, and see what fun you could bring into your own displays. And the last thing that I'm going to leave with you are top tips to take away. Um, firstly, I would say to you, think visual, aural, olfactory appeal. So what does that mean? Stand outside your space, your practice, your salon, your shop, and objectively have a look at it. What needs to be revamped? What needs a coat of paint? What, where could you put some fresh plants, some window boxes? Do you need to clean the glass? Do you need to replace lamps or light bulbs? Do you need to fix your shutters, your awning? Have a look at the handle of your door. Does the paint need to be touched up? Could it do with a bit of, uh, you know, polish to clean the metal. And then when you go inside and you have your displays and the shop laid out, if you are playing music, what is the music that you're playing? Does it match your again, your brand identity? It all comes back down to your brand personality and being able to share that consistently throughout. And the olfactory appeal, the smell, the scent of the place. Think about beautiful vanilla smells, fresh lemons, fresh eucalyptus. All of those really nice sensory smells and even that are seasonal throughout the year, cinnamon towards Christmas, for example. How does your shop, your space, your place smell? Because it's that whole embraceive, immersive retail theatre that I want you to start thinking about for your own place as you as you prepare to reopen your doors. Again, use your windows, the facade, any external space that you have to engage with your customers and entice them in. Um, especially if they're if they're queuing, they're out now, as we hope when people are back on the streets and able to, to walk around in, in comfort. So be objective, have a look and see what you have and how you can optimise those opportunities that you have. And use positive messaging, of course, on your signage, on your boards outside, um, on your social media, on your uniforms. Maybe you haven't got any uniforms at the moment. Would you consider getting some of the uniforms for your reopening with a really positive tagline on them um, on, on images as well as your the name of your brand as well? 
do we consider having a look at your layout of your shop? Use the images I showed you earlier about the different types of the layouts and see if there are any little tweaks that you could make. Or could you bring in some nice house plants from, from home or something to make nice, interesting screens or dividers in order to create your pathways around your space? Again, using those mid-floor displays to create those walls and the path will just make the space feel more welcoming, more connected, visually more aesthetic and, and more pleasing. Bring your products, your place, your people to life online using little quick videos, um, online sessions, little reels on your Instagram, on your Insta stories, on your Facebook. Check out our masterclass on the social media, uh, making social media matter and making it work for you. Have a look at that for ideas and, and of course our, our branding and our, our photography, our photography sessions too. And finally, ask yourself, how can I give the best retail experience to my customers? Um, it's that whole moment. Go back, as I said at the beginning, when I was a child, I remember pressing my nose against the glass, the cold, frosty grass at, at Christmas where invariably you were wrapped up in, a, in an itchy scarf and you were just hoping, hoping that some of those things in the window display would be under the tree for you at Christmas. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this slide now, so hopefully I, you will have some good ideas there from, from that. Um, Daisy. And I really want to thank you um, for, for your time, for, for tuning into this session. What I want to leave you with are, again, some ideas. Think about from your customer's point of view, what makes you so attractive and special that they love going to see you, that they love being able to, and they will love being able to go back to you in real life, in person, to see you, to be in your space, to engage with your products and your services and you. you remember, you are your business, you're the centre of it all, you are the difference and you're, you are what makes it important. So creating the whole magic touch, it does and will come from you as well. Relive moments of wonderful uh, retail experience that you've had as a customer and try and capture that magic and that warm feeling and bring that into your business. Have a look at brands that you love yourself um, and those that inspire you um, from your ethical point of view, your aesthetic point of view, um, and really the things that just engage you and get inspiration from that. Speak to your staff, to your customers, ask them what, what would they like to do. Maybe let your staff have a, a window display takeover experience and see what they could come up with. Um, engage maybe with local charities to see if you can do symbiotic promotions that with you know for causes that connect with you connect with you personally connect with your brand identity as well there's so many opportunities for you to to create that magic touch so i hope you have got some some ideas and top tips um through this and and i really wish you the best for everything as we reopen. And finally, don't forget, do keep in touch with your local council. Um, there will be a download available on your council's website of top tips from these sessions. But always don't be afraid to pick up the phone to, to the teams at the councils and see what support and guidance and advice may be available to you because they are there to, to, to help and, and give you that support as much as possible. These are unprecedented times and they're uncertain times and it's it's very challenging for in so many ways, but we will get there. And I hope you have enjoyed this session and I hope you will join us in the other sessions as well. But thank you so much for your time and I absolutely wish you all the best with everything as we go forward. Thank you. <laughs>